The next piece in our circle work, we need to add a change of direction. So what we're gonna work on is a figure eight on those same size circles that we've been working with. The most important point on this circle is this intersection between our circles on the center line. What I need to do now is prep my horse from right flexion, right rein, to go to left flexion, left rein. There's actually quite a bit of work to do before my horse gets to that point where he needs to switch. There's a lot of problems that we can encounter as riders. Loss of impulsion, loss of straightness, and it's really difficult to keep our horse on track, on our railroad track, and complete the change of direction. So it's really important that we keep this nice frame on our reins and we stay steady with our rein aids. If we do too much movement and too much adjustment in there, that horse will try and follow and we end up losing straightness and that nice connection we had with our reins. I want to spend some time and talk about seat bones. When I'm in my right circle, okay, I should be weighting my left seat bone slightly. So we achieve that again by raising our inside hand just about this much. So by this inside hand on my right circle being a little higher, this brings the shoulder a touch higher and weights this right seat bone and puts weight in my outside stirrup. So as I come through that intersection to change from right circle to go to left, I need to weight my right seat bone just a little bit more. If I'm consistent at changing all three aids at the same time, my horse will start to pick up that when I change those aids, he needs to change direction and change his flexion. So what it will look like is on right circle, my right hand is a little bit higher, weighted my left seat bone, my left leg is back, my right leg is at the girth, supporting this rib cage, sending my left shoulder to my left rein. And when I come through to change, I'm just gonna gently raise my left hand and weight my right seat bone, right leg back, left leg at the girth. So as we approach this intersection, I wanna shorten my left rein, weight my right seat bone, keep both legs on so he doesn't lose impulsion with his hind feet and keeps tracking forward underneath me with those hind feet. Now I want those hind feet to come directly forward underneath corresponding seat bone. So left hind's coming up under left seat bone, right hind is coming up under right seat bone as I'm asking him to walk forward with some activity. Okay, so we're gonna change, go from left to right. I shorten my right rein, weight my left seat bone, left leg moves back. Okay, now he lost straightness. I put some leg on and he added speed instead of giving me his body. As I approach this intersection, I'm shortening my left rein because my new rein is left, weight my right seat bone, and ask him to keep moving forward with those hind feet. That was really good. So as I come through here, I shorten my right rein, change my diagonal. Still wanting to pay attention to my four points, ensuring that he's hitting those points for my circle geometry. I'm gonna go around this one again and we're gonna go to left circle on the third one, shorten my left rein. Okay, I'm getting ready. Little half halt, shorten my right rein. I want to use that inside leg to push him into my new outside rein. So as I come through here, I'm going to use my left leg to push him into my new outside rein, which is my right rein. So as she approaches this, intersection she's going to think about changing rain so she's shortening her new rain riding through with both legs maintaining straightness that was really good 
Okay, shorten your right rein, weight your left seat bone, right leg sends that shoulder. That's beautiful. It's a little behind the vertical, Haley. Shopping cart hands, push your hands forward. Good, so you're shortening your left rein, you're getting ready to change direction. Weight your right seat bone, left leg sends that body to the outside rein. Excellent. We'll do one more at walk. Shortening your new rein, which is that right rein. Both legs on, riding them forward. Very nice. So now when we add trot, when we add speed, we need a little bit more prep time. So at the three quarter mark of your circle, before you change to your intersection, really start organizing your homework pieces. A little half halt if you need to. Good job. What I really like about this is this horse maintains straightness through these intersections. His hind feet are tracking forward at all times. And that's what I'm really paying attention to is those hind feet pushing forward. That means he maintains his balance through that intersection. He could have a little bit more flexion. So really think right rein, right leg, and stay steady with that left outside rein. Little half halt, easy. Okay, so Haley, let's do some half circles. So you're gonna do half circle, change direction, half circle, change direction. So it's a serpentine, essentially. Shorten your right rein. Eyes are on your points. Horse is ahead of your leg. Shorten your new rein, get ready. Okay, so he, he came through there crooked. We need to be a little straighter through there. Hind feet forward. Much better. And the half circle is harder because we have less time to prep. Half halt. New rain is ready. A little straighter through there. Yep, inside leg. Good job. Ride straight through your intersection. That was nice. Oh, you lost his hind end for a couple steps. That's okay. So if you need a little half halt, just collect that trot a little. Good job. So a little bit more rain aid to support. Rain aid, rains. Good. Couple more. Shorten your reins. Nice correction. Before you come into that, start half halting at the point before your change, okay? Half halt. Half halt, half halt. Good, that one is the one that you come through with lack of straightness. Half halt, straight through. Really think about using your inside leg to push the rib cage. Fill your outside rein. Left leg. Half halt, half halt. Right leg, much better. So this time, let's do that full circle on the end and then exit. Eyes on your points. Nice straight line to exit. Good job. There's common problems that happen in all these, all these exercises that usually every rider will find at some point or another in their training. So what we talked about was keeping tempo through that change of direction, and that's really hard to start. What we do is we take our legs off and um, that horse wants to slow down and not keep that tempo through that change of direction. So it's really important we keep that leg aid on and keep them in front of our leg and keep them moving forward. On the flip side of that, we don't want them to go too fast. 
So we don't want to be coming in with a big open trot because it's really difficult for us to get organized and things come up really quickly. It boils down to planning and getting our homework done early. So if I'm gonna change flexion and bend over here, I wanna start at this point of my circle and start getting ready so I can be prepared when I get to that intersection. Another problem we talked about was uh, maintaining straightness through the change. It's, it's difficult because they, they want to follow their nose and their body wants to do all sorts of things. Um, the steadier we are, the more consistent we are with our legs, the more straightness they will find. So if we need to slow down a little bit and collect our walk or our trot, that helps maintain that straightness. And really think about using all three of those aids when you go through there and staying engaged in the exercise. I think our brain switches off from our horse and we're thinking about the actual activity of changing direction and then we can't get all the things on our boxes ticked off.